Welcome back to Diana in the Pink. My name is Diana. I'm a physician assistant and I specialize in women's health and gynecology. In this video, I'm going to be talking about vaginal discharge when you're pregnant. But first, if you are new to Diana in the Pink, I hope that you will subscribe. We talk a lot about pregnancy and also mommyhood and women's health stuff. So if that interests you, go ahead and hit the notification bell too. But let's not waste any more time and let's jump right into the good stuff and that is vaginal discharge. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is normal discharge and then I'm going to jump into what abnormal discharge looks like. Abnormal discharge suggests an infection which can cause complications with your pregnancy and problems for your baby. So make sure to stick around because you don't want to miss that. Now whether you are pregnant or not, vaginal discharge is completely normal and I have done several videos about it because it should be talked about. 50% of the population have it so like almost 4 billion people. It's time to normalize this topic. We need to know what it's all about. So the vagina has a self-cleaning mechanism and discharge plays an important part in that. You have glands in the vagina and on the cervix that make a special fluid that helps to carry away dead cells and bacteria, which helps to keep the vagina clean and to prevent infections. Vaginal discharge also helps to moisturize and lubricate the vagina. Normal vaginal discharge can vary depending on where you are in your cycle or with sexual arousal. But as you start to become familiar with what your normal discharge looks like, you won't be nervous or alarmed when you see normal changes throughout your cycle. So. Normal discharge is usually white and creamy, or it can sometimes be clear and mucousy. And clear and mucousy is kind of hard to picture, um, but the best thing that I can think of to help you get an idea of what that looks like, if you think of the consistency of egg whites, that's what I mean when I say mucousy. There can be an odor to normal discharge, and if there is a smell, it's not strong or foul smelling. It usually is described as maybe a little bit sour smelling, but if you have worked out, or if you haven't showered in a while, then that odor can be stronger. Now, when you are pregnant, your vagina will continue to do what it does, making vaginal discharge. But you might notice some differences in the discharge compared to when you are not pregnant. You might notice more discharge or a change in the color. And the reason is that when you are pregnant, your body is making more estrogen and you are getting an increase in blood flow to the pelvic organs. So normal discharge when you are pregnant can be white or creamy, or it can be thick and mucousy, and it can be odorless or have a mild sour odor, which is pretty much what I mentioned as normal for when you are not pregnant, only you might experience more than what you normally do, and that is totally okay. Also, near the beginning of your pregnancy, you might notice that your white or creamy discharge is tinged with a little bit of light pink blood. This can be considered normal. It can be just from a little bit of bleeding when the embryo starts to implant into the endometrial lining. We call this implantation bleeding. Also, later in your pregnancy, like in the last few weeks of your pregnancy, you might notice a thick mucousy discharge that it's a little bit blood tinged. This is usually from the thick mucus that has been covering your cervix throughout your pregnancy to protect your baby. Now as your cervix starts to thin when you are getting a little bit closer to delivering your baby, the mucus and a little bit of blood can be discharged. We call this the bloody show. These two examples are both considered to be normal discharge just as long as it's just a little bit of light pink tinge or red to the mucus. Of course, if you are bleeding like a period, you need to get checked out fast, so call your OB. So if you do notice more discharge and you feel like it's normal, you might try to do something about it. But if you've seen any of my videos on discharge before, you know that I always say avoid douching. But this is even more important when you're pregnant. Don't douche. Don't try to wash inside the vagina and also be careful when you're cleaning your outside of your vagina. This is called the vulva. Don't use too much soap. Don't use soaps with dyes and fragrances. Don't scrub hard and don't use washcloths to clean that area. They can be really abrasive to that sensitive tissue down there and you can actually introduce bacteria that can cause infections. How do you know if you possibly have an infection down there? That's what we're going to talk about next but first Again, if you are new here, I have a whole pregnancy series where I walk you through pregnancy week by week. I talk about baby development, common pregnancy symptoms and how to help with them, what to expect at your OB appointments and so much more. So I'm gonna link to that playlist right here and I'm also gonna put a link to that at the end of this video. I hope that you check them out. There's tons of good information that will help you through your pregnancy. So on 
to abnormal discharge when you were pregnant. So abnormal discharge often suggests a possible infection because yes, you still can get vaginal infections while you're pregnant. And it is so important to recognize abnormal symptoms so that you can see your OB and get it treated. When left untreated, certain infections can cause your water to break early or your baby to come early. It can cause low birth weight in your baby or your baby can catch the infection when they are delivered. There are many different kinds of infections that can cause discharge, but the most common ones that we see are from yeast infections, chlamydia, gonorrhea, trichomonas, bacterial vaginosis, and others. Let's start out talking about yeast infections. So a yeast infection is not actually a bacterial infection, it's a fungal infection. And it can cause mild to really intense itching and burning around the outside and the inside of the vagina. It can make the outside of the vagina, the vulva, very, very red and inflamed, and it can also cause discharge. Usually yeast infection discharge is white and it's thick and clumpy. Some people think it looks like cottage cheese. Oh no, what's that? I don't like cheese. Bacterial vaginosis is most notable for a fishy odor along with an increase in vaginal discharge. And the discharge can be yellow, it can be green or brown, and there usually isn't an itch, but sometimes it can itch. Certain STIs or sexually transmitted infections can also cause vaginal discharge. Chlamydia and gonorrhea, for example, can both cause thick or thin, yellow, green, or even white discharge. And sometimes you can have other symptoms with it like itching, burning, foul odor, pain with urination, or pain with sex. Trichomonas, also a sexually transmitted infection, typically can cause green bubbly, like frothy discharge, but that can vary too. The last kind of discharge I wanna mention is a clear watery or a yellow watery discharge, very thin. And sometimes people mistake this for urine. This is something to be on the lookout for further along in your pregnancy when you are closer to delivering your baby. When your water breaks, it's often described as a sudden gush of fluid from your vagina, but it doesn't always happen that way. Your water is actually amniotic fluid and it can slowly leak out of your vagina and you can notice this thin, clear, watery fluid on your sheets or on your underwear or your clothes. And sometimes women mistake amniotic fluid for their pee because you know they have a baby pressing on their bladder. So urinary leakage can happen too. And it can be hard to determine. So if you think your amniotic fluid might be leaking, call your OB or go in to be checked. So these aren't really all the causes of abnormal vaginal discharge. There are other infectious and non-infectious reasons, but these are by far the most common reasons. So if you noticed, when I was talking about abnormal symptoms, I almost always mentioned unusual colors of discharge and other associated symptoms like itching, swelling, burning, pain with urination or pain with sex. These symptoms all overlap. So you couldn't ever really self-diagnose yourself just based upon your symptoms because, for example, burning on the vulva could be a yeast infection, but it could also be an STI. Fish smelling discharge could be from bacterial vaginosis or could be from trichomonas. And with all of these, you're gonna need a prescription to treat them. Now, some of you might jump in on the comments and remind me that, hey, you can treat yeast infections over the counter which is true, but there are some formulations of yeast infection medications that are over the counter that you shouldn't use when you're pregnant. Plus, you only want to ever use medications, over the counter or not, when you are sure of what's going on because you don't wanna take a medication unnecessarily when you're pregnant. So the point of all this is, if you are having any of these symptoms that I mentioned, make sure to see your OB, your midwife, whoever it is that's managing your pregnancy, and then let them evaluate you, test you, and then get you on the right and safe treatment. So to recap, clear or creamy white smooth discharge without strong or foul smells and no itching, burning, or pain, we usually consider this normal. Increased thick yellow, green, or chunky white discharge with pain, itching, burning, or pain with urination, or pain with sex, all can be symptoms that you should have evaluated. Now, I do wanna remind you that this video is meant to be informative and educational. It's not intended to be medical advice or to diagnose and or to diagnose or treat you. If you are having any symptoms that you are concerned about, make sure to check it out with your own OB. But if you liked this video, hey, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to Diana in the Pink, it's a great time to do that right here. Now, if you wanted to check out my pregnancy playlist that I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna link to that video right here. Click on that video and I will see you over there.